difference between amphibians and reptiles? Uh, well, they're both they're both ectotherms. Uh, as far as the generalization, the amphibians have smooth, permeable skin. Uh, reptiles are covered with scales and are kind of more protected from the elements. Okay. And overall, do amphibians like the cold? Um, I don't know if you can really make a generalization on that because there's a lot of temperate amphibians, but then there's also a lot of tropical frogs, especially. Um, salamanders are more temperate species and do appreciate the cold. Um, there's probably more tropical frogs, though, than temperate frogs. So I don't know if I can really uh, generalize that. So can amphibians be found worldwide? Uh, basically worldwide, yeah, with the exception of the poles. Um, but basically they have a worldwide distribution. Okay. Uh, do any amphibians have poison or venom? Uh, yeah, there's no venomous amphibians, but they're definitely poisonous ones. Um, dart frogs, poison dart frogs are kind of the famous example, but there are dozens and dozens of species that have certain toxins in their skin. Um, even common, you know, like American toads, you can find in the Cincinnati area have uh, have poison in their uh, paratoid glands. So there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, amphibians that, that have poison in their skin. Definitely, it's used as a defense. Okay. Um, are salamanders safe to hold if they're not poisonous? Yeah, most species are. There there are a few that have a lot of poison, a lot of uh, toxins in their skin. Um, some of which are even found in the pet trade, like uh, cap one that's called California newts. Um, they they have enough toxin in them to kill a person if you were to try to eat one. Um, there have there have been children and uh, and inebriated campers that have stuck them in their mouths before with uh, some pretty bad consequences. So um, in general, it's best just to if you're handling an amphibian just to wash off your hands afterwards. Okay. Uh, how do amphibians drink water? Um, they don't really drink it in a traditional sense, like you know, like some reptiles do and mammals and birds do. But they, they generally they absorb it through their skin. Okay. And what do salamanders eat? Um, all salamanders are carnivorous, so it just depends on the size of the animal. Um, really small ones uh, can eat you know anything from mites and ants to some of the larger prey, and then really large uh, amphibians like uh, giant salamanders um, can even eat small mammals like rats and uh, frogs and fish and things like that. So it just depends on the size of the animal. And how, how big can a salamander get? Uh, Chinese and Japanese giant salamanders can get at least five feet long. Okay. Um, potentially bigger, but you don't really find the, uh, the big specimens more like you used to, but yeah, around five feet. Okay. Um, do salamanders go through a hibernation? Um, not all of them do, but the ones that are found in this part of the world definitely go through hibernation. Um, it's kind of a shorter dormant period than a lot of other animals, and probably not a true hibernation. Um, more of a brumation, where they just kind of slow down a little bit. Uh, but even salamanders in the wild will come out, you know, January and February, they'll come out and start breeding, so um, they're, they're not as sensitive to cold temperatures as uh, a lot of other animals. Okay. Do amphibians make good house pets? Um, certain species, you really, uh, I would definitely go with a, with a captive-born animal. Uh, some species like white tree frogs can make really long-lived and, and hardy pets. Uh, we just had a really old specimen recently die. It was almost 30 years old, so uh, it, it can be a long commitment, too. At the zoo, do you have any breeding plans for any of your amphibians? Uh, we, we definitely would like to get the giant salamanders into a, into a breeding situation. Uh, we've had them in a breeding situation in the past. They're, they're pretty difficult to breed. Uh, nobody's ever bred. Japanese giant salamanders in a closed system. They've only been bred outside. And Chinese salamanders have only been bred in a closed system uh, once or twice that I'm aware of. Uh, but neither species has ever been bred in the U.S. So it's a challenge, but that's that's definitely something we'd like to do. Okay. Why is it so difficult? Um, 
we're just not really sure what the cues are for breeding. We don't know if it's, uh, it's, it's probably related to photo period changes, temperature changes, um, but there also might be other things that trigger the animals to, uh, to get ready for reproduction, um, you know, such as changes in water depth or water flow and things like that. So okay. there's, a, there's a number of things that come into play. They're just not as simple as some of the other species. Okay, and how come there's not a lot of amphibians out on display in the zoo? Uh, a lot of amphibians are difficult to display. They hide a lot. Um, and there's also challenges with husbandry. They're a little bit trickier um, to keep in good health on display as opposed to uh, other animals like reptiles. Okay. Um, but mainly the, the real challenge is to, to keep them visible because the amphibians, especially salamanders, are so secretive. But there's salamanders that are salamanders and frogs both that are protected at the state level um, and at the federal level and even internationally. So um, every year, more and more species are listed as endangered or threatened. So uh, things are starting to fall into place. The amphibians are starting to get the attention and the protection they deserve. Now, which type of salamander is this? This is a Japanese crocodile newt. This is considered a national treasure in Japan. It's only found on the southern islands in Japan, and those islands are the more tropical ones. Now, is it supposed to be that big, or is it pregnant or something? Yeah, this is this is kind of their normal build. Uh, this is a female. They're a little bit bigger. But if you see these tips on the ribs here, um, if this animal was attacked by something, um, the ribs can actually penetrate the skin there, and they have a pretty strong toxin in there they can use to defend themselves. Okay. But they're very prehistoric looking. So they haven't changed during, during the time? Yeah, they've, they've been... They've, they've lasted pretty good. Um, they've become more threatened now because when they cross the roads they get run over by cars, but they basically remained unchanged for a long time. So do they migrate? They do kind of, uh, on rainy nights, they'll kind of move towards the uh, edge of ponds. Yeah. And then they lay their eggs right at the edge of a pond or what will be a pond once it fills up with rain. And then the little uh, salamander larvae wriggle down to the water. And then they uh, go through their larval period in the ponds and then they crawl out before the ponds dry up. What species is this? This is a Denny's tree frog. You can find these in China and parts of Southeast Asia. And there's some coloring on his back. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's kind of meant to look like a leaf with a few imperfections on it. So those are normal spots on him to help him camouflage. Okay. And this animal was, let's see, he's over... Uh, He's over 10 years old. He's going on, what, 13 years old? So how can you tell the sex of an amphibian, or at least for the frog? Uh, for the frogs, generally males have a kind of a baggier throat pouch here. Because okay. males are the ones that go down to the ponds and call, so usually they have looser skin around their throat. And on some species, they'll get little pads on the inside of their feet where they used to grab onto the females. And then there are some size differences, too, between the sexes, but it kind of varies between the different species. So no female makes the mating call? Uh, they'll make kind of a, a really, occasionally on some species, they'll make a little bit of a, kind of a little bit of a chirp, but not the big, they don't go into the big choruses like the males do. Mm -hmm. 